Fourth time's the charm. Anybody who thinks that they can do better than that uh, theme, I appreciate that. I just also want to remind everybody um, that jazz means freedom. And uh, it took me some time to learn what the heck that means, probably 20 years and more, and I probably still don't know all the meaning. But uh, jazz means freedom. So uh, if you don't know, if you don't like the... Um, theme just meditate on that and if you still don't like the theme meditate on it some more that's where i'm at um jello again this is ben hitchcock cross talking to you today um we got a couple of stories this is uh, i think three stories is what we got uh somebody said <laughs> commented that there might be a video before there was more deposition footage and uh they weren't wrong <laughs> um but most of my stories will explain sort of what the heck's going on. So um, hopefully uh, we're there. Um, I do not like to bring anybody's family members into YouTube, and I don't like it when YouTubers comment about their family. So um, well, I'll be as oblique as possible. But I will say um, that the local school district uh, – sent out an email to a bunch of parents saying that uh, they were in need of uh, drivers to drive a bunch of students to Madison um, tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, if, if you know anything about me, if the school district asks for volunteers and says that line, like, if we don't get the volunteers, we're not going to have the field trip thing, I'm, the, I'm you're going to get a reply from me within five minutes. Um because I think everybody should be going in, and I'm kind of shocked that I'm not, and if they're available, I'm there. So um, you only have so many here. You better, you just better get in there. Um, also, by the way, can't stand the parents who are there because they can't give their children enough space uh, to be themselves, um, you know, not either just from helicoptering or because they're afraid, uh, you know, that the child will somehow reflect poorly on them. Uh, both of those things, I think, are not the right spirit. But moving on from that, um, when uh, the fact that I volunteered here got out, uh, there was a uh, substantial ruckus. <laughs> Let's put it like that. And it lasted for quite some time. Um, but uh, it was clear, uh, at least I understood, that um, there were certain factors about, um, let's say, who I am and how I comport myself that are not universally appreciated, um, particularly by everybody in my family. And um, everybody in my family might think that the, you know, the rest of the community may also have that belief. <laughs> Probably right. Um, nevertheless, uh, there was a great deal of consternation. And um, I think many people thought that I was doing it um, just to be one of those kind of parents. Um, but again, yeah, that's not me. So um, one did have to stay the course because I don't know what you, you can't let a school district down and you can't go and refuse to do it because, um, you know, a child wants you to not be a volunteer. That's just how it goes. Um, and you can't, especially if they ask you not to, that's, I think that whole thing is problematic there. Um, so, um, what can you do but explain and do the best thing you can? So I get this email on Monday of last week uh, sort of saying, thanks, uh, we've got this uh, parent who's also went through the HR screening um, like that. So um, the way that I got it was that I guess the both of you are going to go together. And I was like, okay, I guess I could sit in the back with them or drive or I don't know what, but okay. So I sent that off to the old fam just so that they got the concept. And um, I didn't hear anything more about it. So come to find out on 
Friday, I'm asking, like, you know, it's kind of weird that I haven't gotten any messages from the school about, like, what I'm supposed to do on Monday or, what you know, when or what or whatever. And everybody's like, uh, you're not you're not coming, don't you know? And uh, before I start singing and dancing, because if there's anything I do not want to do is to drive a van full of children, uh, pupils, on my least favorite highway in probably the universe, uh, that being the road between Milwaukee and Madison, uh, it's the worst. It is literally the, it's just one huge culture clash. And um, I can't stand their culture. <laughs> way Madisonians drive to me is uh, an outrage, uh, an outrage, <laughs> but that's how it is. So, um, you know that style of driving where you're like minding everybody else's business but your own? That's, I mean, that's Madison right there. <clears throat> so, um, but then I reread the email and this is what I find that, hey, my services are no longer required. <laughs> So, um, I guess the best or the worst of all worlds, depending on how you look at it there, <laughs> and boy, did we have a lot of uh, weeks of consternation, um, just so, uh, and here I was thinking, not only <laughs> did I do everything I was supposed to do, I got out of it, and was never required to do it, but I, for a whole week, I thought I was sitting here working around not being able to do any work on Monday. <laughs> you know, because... They had written the email in such a way as to not make it sound like your services are no longer required. But it was ambiguous enough that I didn't quite get it. And because I don't speak educator very well. You'd think I would, representing educators uh, and so forth, but I, I don't think like, you know, an institutionalized educator is just not the way that I think. So we're a bit at odds with that sometimes. Okay, so that's story number one. Um, story number two is simply this. I, we have two, and I'm the preface for one and two, we have two storylines going on here. Uh, one is um, officer, or, um, let's say, ERD hearing examiner Gelhard, for lack of a better word, and his um, the issues with him and his boss, Secretary Petschek, and how the ERD is responding to that apparent conflict. Um, that's story one, and then story two, I think that most people are focused on, you know, is the depositions and the, and the Teresa Falaran case there. Um, so, as we were speaking last time, I think um, MPS had come out with this motion uh, saying that uh, the he whole hearing should not be recorded or, uh, because uh, some reasons that turned out to be pretty silly. Well, they've also filed a motion saying that the whole case should be thrown out because we have uh, put the depositions on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> so I, th I think some other things too. I don't know. Um, I think their strategy was to file as many um, briefs as they can. I, I just am so jammed up at the moment. I'm not even really... I have not really looked at that one other than to say um, it's of the same kind of caliber and the same vein uh, as the one that we had gone through on that video legal research one there. Uh, we'll probably do another one on that. <clears throat> so, okay. Uh, and then um, while all that was going on, uh, we're getting set, that was the Friday, we're getting set for Monday. I think this is Monday of this week. We find some serious... Um, information about what's going on with Aisha Carr. <clears throat> and I don't, unfortunately I can't get into it too much here, but it's not clear and it's still not clear to me now whether we're making the news, creating new issues, uh, you know, whether we're part of the story, meaning us putting the stuff on the air and the depositions is part of what's happening or if it's independent or if it's you know, part of the thing, and there's other, it's just hard, it's, it was really, really hard to know what exactly, what role we were playing there. Um, so I think uh, the thought uh, that we all had was, um, if we don't know, 
what is happening, the best thing to do is to hold off. You have to understand that much of the time I'm free, much of the time I might not have goat stuff or whatever else going on. This is obviously the only time I'm going to pull this this video here. Um, otherwise occupied. Um, otherwise occupied. Uh, much, and I've said this before, that this is to the extent that we're doing this on behalf of other people, that's a priority, but YouTube is not the... Uh, is a medium of communication uh, for us. It's not the beginning and end. You know, we really appreciate all of you. We really appreciate learning uh, with you and learning from you and uh, collaborating there. And I, I guess I can say we apologize here for anybody who was waiting for videos and didn't get them. But I think the um, I think it's best for everybody. When we don't know what's going on, but you don't know what the rules of the game are, you've got information coming in that doesn't fit, uh, the best thing to do is to wait. Um, because there's a lot of things you can take back, but it's hard to take back YouTube videos. Um, so we still have them. We still got, there's no, like, we're not afraid. There's no issues. We're just being cautious here. Um, nobody's threatened us with this one. <laughs> Nobody that I know of, there's been no um, direct uh, anything like that uh, external, uh, I would say, impetus for this. There's just been information that we have that's making us think, hey, um, <clears throat> we are going to take this slow on this one. Then, normally, what would happen, assuming I've got videos uh, cut up or produced and ready to go, and whoever... Um, I don't know. Assuming that we did or didn't, I, I, I really don't even know if we did or didn't this time. I think the answer is yes. Because uh, certainly there was certain more caught, but I, no, that's why. Okay. So the question is, did we have more other content to go? I'm sure we did. Um, and what happened with that is simply this. Judge Gelhard had two open cases with me. The one in which he made the comment about my religion with the conflict of interest with Amy Petchichev. The other one he had was with MPS, and that one also had a conflict of interest with his colleague Calvin Furman being a, at least a witness in that case. Remember, Calvin Furman is an ALJ now, so he would be the um, colleague of ALJ Galhart. So, um, I don't think we, and I can, I'm almost positive that we did not raise that issue of that conflict between Calvin Furman and uh, Galhart at any time. But I will say that um, sometime this week, uh, we got an email from ALJ Galhart. And it went something like this. Uh, we'll look into it a lot more, and there'll, I'm sure there'll be a whole separate video on this. But it said, back in August, I asked you all for if, whether you wanted to mediate. You never responded. I'm asking for a new ALJ to take over this case. And the part of the problem there was, although the fact that he's asking for another ALJ to take over the case is 100% the right and proper thing to do, it made it seem like that it was somehow the fact that Mr. Reardon and I didn't respond about mediation. And let's be clear, if there was ever any request for mediation by email or any other, we had a thing, we would have been clear that we weren't mediating. Because this is with MPS. I mean, it's, it, it's, they wouldn't be spending half a million dollars on legal fees if they were interested in mediating. So um, now, so we got this email saying that he's unilaterally taking himself off the case, but the only indication of why is that he nobody responded to him about mediation. So I think that's significantly problematic because I think it's not the real reason, and I'll tell you that. Um, I went to the ERD to deliver some paperwork, and we couldn't get a hold of anybody there. They wouldn't come down to take the paperwork. Okay. 
that the state office building they won't come down and take paperwork. I, I don't understand what their the concept is, but okay. So um, we make a call, I make a call, and I make this call to the central office in Madison. It's on a sign there at the state office building in Milwaukee. And we call, and I s explain to them the problem, and they transfer me to Ramona Natera, the boss of uh, the appointing authority and the chief of the, the administrator, rather, of the ERG. So um, we had a great conversation, and we had a lot of conversations about the fact that every time I make a complaint to um, Director Celso, or the head of the ERG, sorry, this person is, there's the Equal Rights Division, and then there's Department of Workforce Development. Right. And then there's, in within the Equal Rights Division, there is the Bureau of Hearings. Okay? Now, when I talked to Ramona Natera, she told me, and I said, hey, I keep making all these comments, uh, complaints about John Gelhard, and I don't ever get a response to you. And she said, extremely pleasant, and explained to me that she doesn't take in res uh, complaints, uh, receive complaints if they're not from th the supervisor. Okay? And I may have talked about this on another video. I don't know, because there's, like I'm saying here, this is the whole point is a lot of the stuff we just haven't put out yet. For the reasons, again, that I'll explain below, is I'm just that was just too much to this final bit of gaslighting i think of you didn't get the mediation so therefore we're giving you a new judge uh, um was too much so um i'm having this great conversation with her and she says about you know hey we're, i'm supposed to get these from cell source so i go and look in all the regs and we do all this everything we got to do and lo and behold it looks like she's right there's got to be something that comes from the direct supervisor so i'm like hey you know, I've made complaints to the direct supervisor before, and, like, uh, if you're not responding to those, then, you know, she's not doing anything of those, then I think I kind of need to make a complaint to you about how these things are getting handled. So somehow in all of that, I start getting a little bit more traction from um, Maria Selsor. And I want to say, again, that part of the problem here is that Maria Selsor, just structurally, is both a... ALJ, a hearing examiner, and the bureau director. So she's the boss and one of them. So I'm sure she participates in these meetings as, you know, a peer, but then also a boss. And you can see how that is a difficult position to be in in terms of supervision. I'll also say that the fact that ALJs have, are not really ever being disciplined is part of the culture there at the ERD that goes back way before her. That I know is a fact. Okay, so don't I don't want it to be implied that I'm saying it's just her that's doing it because I know that this has been an ongoing issue. Okay, because I mean I recently found a case where an ALJ just basically straight up refused to do what the a labor and industry review commission in ordered him to do and found and just straight up didn't do it and like. The Labor and Industry Review Commission wasn't even surprised when they remarked about that. And it didn't seem to me that there was ever any consequence for him just deciding that he was going to do whatever the heck he wanted to do. Which seems shocking to me. I mean, if these guys are in a situation where there is a bubble of independence around them, maybe that's the absolute right thing to do. But I, nothing that I see in any regulation or anything says that, hey, they're allowed to be separate. Okay. During this time, I start to have detailed back and forth with uh, Maria Selsor about my complaints on uh, Mr. Gelhardt. I then say that you'd never respond to my complaints about ALJ DeLau. She and this is, I copied this to Ramona Natera, and ALJ Seltzer says that's a false statement that I made, that she did respond. And it's true that she responded. And I think this is, she misses the, the broader point here. It's true that she responded when I said, hey, I think that there is a, a conflict and that, um, 
whether there is or isn't, that ALJ DeLau had the duty to divulge the fact to my client, if nobody else, that she was aware that Secretary Petrachek was her boss when Secretary Petrachek's name came up at the hearing. And again, ALJ DeLau decided in the decision that we didn't have, she didn't have to mention it because I should have done it and because she found a fact that we had no opportunity to cross-examine that the judge found, based on her own knowledge and information, that Petrachek had not interfered with the case. Again, we couldn't examine that or cross-examine in any way, challenge that evidence. So that meant to her that therefore the end. Well, the problem was is that Selsor adopted all those findings at the same time, telling us that if we had a problem with what the judge was doing, that we needed to raise those motions with the judge. And I'm saying, no, I wanted you to, to conduct an administrative review. So then she conducts an administrative review, but then finds that because there was no conflict of interest, that then there was no rule violation. Okay? And again, the problem there is she's making, she's looking at the law and the le her opinion on the law and the legal argument, meaning again, that's because Secretary Petrachek, and this is, she says that in her letters, didn't interfere with the case, that therefore there was no potential conflict. And my problem with that is those are two separate issues. The one is a legal determination by this hearing examiner that there was no uh, conflict. And the other one is the Supreme Court ethics rules, which says that attorneys have to divulge potential conflicts. And the fact that she may or may not have done that is a violation of the rules, of the work conduct rules for employees of the state of Wisconsin. Okay? Those are two separate questions, the work rule supervisory question, the legal question. And what she did was come back and respond to the work rule violation question with a legal answer that she just copied and pasted from what she had said a month earlier, which, you know, whether that was supportable or not, it's clearly not an answer. Coincidentally, the next day we get this email the next day after I pointed these facts out, we get this email saying because we didn't respond, because we're such jerks and didn't respond to his request for mediation from August 23rd. So all of August, uh, seven days in August went by, September, October, November, December, January, and some good in February. It's so almost, you know, more than six months go by, and he doesn't say anything about the um, mediation issue. Less than one day goes by before I raise again um, my, I ask for formally for the second or third time the his boss to review my complaints against his uh his conduct, and really for two reasons. Number one, for ordering me to uh, withdraw the complaint on behalf of my client, and two, putting in writing his thoughts that are totally irrelevant on my religion. And I guess three, that when I uh, pressed to take out the comments on the religion, he not only took out the comments on the religion, but then took out all of the things, the other rest of the evidence, for example, his ordering me to uh, withdraw the claim on behalf of my client. So I guess that's three, because uh, those two first two things are um, problematic in and of themselves. They're a violation of the work rule, but the third one is a violation of the work rule that says that um, state employees can't alter records. And I believe he did that. So um, that we raised all those issues, and the next day uh, we get this sort of, and I'm going to use the word gaslighting again because it makes it seem like it's about the mediation, uh, but in fact I think it's about this conduct that's going on there. 
So with all that in mind, I, I, I'm just, again, I'm not sure that we are ready to tell that whole story. Uh, we've got a lot of the video from it, but so we paused. And that's what my story today is about, is why we're sitting here pausing. And we're probably not going to come up with anything tomorrow. Um, and we're going to go from there. Um, you know, I've got some other things. I guess we may have to shift gears. I don't know. Um, I'm still uh, got some work things to settle out, too. Um, but again, um, I'm just not sure how uh, to play all of this. Um, when not only so many things seem to be in flux, but it's not clear to what extent um, who's acting on us or if we're acting on them. And um, I really, really appreciate, again, everybody's watching us. And I appreciate you hanging in there. And you wouldn't be saying comments about how we can't wait for it to come back and I'm checking every morning. And I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, we do have to keep uh, a lot, you know, there's, there's bigger things in mind here. And certainly I just hope you understand that the legal um, strategies that we're explaining to you and we're putting forth and the stories that we're telling on behalf of the clients here are, um, you know, the clients come first. So that that's all, that's all. If we're not, you know, I may be tired, I may, whatever, but here we're telling you uh, quite clearly, and I think you all understand that, and I appreciate you listening, uh, but nevertheless, uh, the clients have to come first. So that's the strike of the balance that we're making. I appreciate you listening to my apology, and um, as I often say, stick with us. We'll keep you informed. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I have missed you all, um, but that's how it goes. Yeah, put in the, what I meant by that was um, in in one of the things that's good and bad about being a lawyer is you have to put your client's interests first. So whether or not um, you know, there will be always be more chances for me to talk in. Uh, you know, my parents' basement. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, but yes, thank you so much. It really means a lot to us. Take care.